Michael Brown here. I was asked recently about aligning frames in After Effects, and this is typically done with the portraiture application. Uh, when I do a 3D lenticular portrait of a person, I like to take a single mirrorless camera, mount it on a slider, and then slide that camera from right to left, capturing a series of frames. So for the demonstration I'm about to show you, I actually did something similar, but instead of a still camera, I used a video camera. And I had that camera on an orbital dolly, which allowed me to arc the camera around the subject. So I have a short video, and you'll see when you look at this video that the model position changes because the camera is moving. Be more obvious when I show you the actual footage. So let me launch Adobe After Effects, and then let me come over here and launch our sample video. So this is it. I'm going to take the pointer and I put it over the model's eye, and then I'm going to hit the space bar, which will play these frames. Now, I haven't moved the camera yet. Now the camera's beginning to move, and you can see the model's eye is leaving the position of where that pointer is. And if I continue to play the video, you'll see she'll get further and further away from the pointer. I'm going to pause it right here. I think you get the idea. I'm going to come over here. I think I'll first trim this clip because there's all this stuff in the beginning where not much is going on. So I'll slide the indicator here because now the dolly is moving. And I'm going to come here and set that as my endpoint. And I'll slide this over here. And I'll set that as my endpoint. I'm just going to put the pointer on that bar, click, and say trim comp to work area. So now we've gotten rid of that extraneous footage where the camera really wasn't moving. And just looking at this, it looks like about about 360 frames here. So I'm going to bring that back to the beginning. Now I want to stabilize this footage. I want to line up everything on the model's eye. And so to do that, I'm going to use the stabilize motion button here. And if we zoom into the screen a little bit, you can see there's something labeled track point. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to come up and I'm just going to put that over the model's eye and make this box a little bigger. And I'm going to make that a little bigger. And then over here for options, I'm going to make sure this enhance before matches check. That basically uh, does processing where it increases the contrast to make the target, in this case, the eye a little more visible, a little easier to track. And then I also like to use this adapt feature on every frame. As the camera is moving and changing its position, the perspective changes. And so sometimes the shape of the eye or the shape of whatever you want to track changes. And this actually compensates for that on a frame by frame basis. Notice that that is changing its geometry and it will still continue to track it. So I'll select okay for those options. We'll go back here to the fit control, and then I'll move over to this play button, analyze forward, and I'll click that. And now it starts playing this video frame by frame, and you can see that box is following the model's eye. So considering there are 360 frames, it's going reasonably quickly. Uh, this is a HD video, so it's not as though it's extremely high resolution. The theory behind this works with still images as well. So you can load either a video into After Effects or you can load a series of still frames. All right, it's done. And you can see the bar here, how it tracks the position of the eye from left to right. I'm going to come over here to apply. I'm going to click that button and it has one more set of options for us. Do we want to apply the correction in both the X and Y direction the X only or the Y only. Typically, I use X and Y because, although I try to be very precise with my technique, I usually have the camera on the slider and I'm holding down the shutter button and sliding it across. And there's a tendency for a little up and down vibration when I'm doing that. So by correcting the Y as well as the X, it will compensate for that, that uh, vibration or motion. So I'll say, okay. And now I'm going to, again, put the pointer over the model's eye. This time I'll hit the space bar 
to play. And you can see the pointers now staying on the eye. So it's basically taken all those frames and aligned them to the model's eye. Now in the finished lenticular print, whatever we align to, in this case the eye, that will be at the surface of the print. And anything forward of that eye, like her shoulder, would come forward off the print. And anything behind the eye, like that spiral staircase, that will recede behind her. Now, I will tell you in this particular scene, there's not really a lot that's coming forward from her. So it's not a, a scene that has a lot of uh, negative parallax that would be coming forward. But this does make for a really nice uh, 3D lenticular portrait. All right, so we have that aligned. Now what we want to do is come over here to add this to the render queue. And I can actually pick either a, a JPEG or TIFF sequence. Here's JPEG sequence, here's TIFF sequence. But what I usually do, I just leave it here at QuickTime and make a movie out of it. So we'll come here. I do want to give it a slightly different file name. I'm going to say that's aligned. I suppose I could say it's aligned in trimmed and I'm going to save that out. So we'll select the render button and you can see the little progress bar moving along the bottom as it's exporting this video. It says we have 359 frames. Now I don't need 359 frames to make the video, you know, geez, I probably could use every fourth frame that would give me about 80 or so. So let me do that. I'm going to come over here to Adobe Photoshop and I'll come to File, Import, Video Frames to Layers. I'll pick our aligned video. Here, limit to every, I'll put four, so that will grab every fourth frame, some of the sequence. That make frame animation, I don't need that. Hit OK. All right, so here we go in the layers panel. I have layer one and then I have layer 90. So that would be every fourth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab this top layer. I held the shift button down, selected the top one. So now all 90 layers are selected. I'm gonna come over here where it says normal, move down to difference, and now I wanna crop this. So I like to do a square lenticular so I can put in a a ratio one to one square and then come over here and basically grab the area I want. Uh, let's say you don't like squares, you want to make an eight by 10 print. We can come in here and redo that to a four by five aspect ratio. I'll slide that over, bring it down a little bit. All right, and I will hit the return or enter button. Actually, the return, not the enter button. All right, so it's they're cropped. I'm gonna come back here, put that to normal, and now go file, export, layers to file. We'll come over here and put them in our directory, frames alignment demo. I'm gonna make a new folder. That'll be called two interlace. So we'll open that, I'll get rid of that untitled. It will actually number the frames as it exports those. I have it set up to export JPEG frames. That's usually the way I work. I'll hit run. This will take a few moments. I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but I know it always takes a little bit of time before it starts. So it's, it's starting now. So I can see on screen and set frame 70, 65, 56, so slowly exporting those. All right, we're at 34, and 24, final countdown, 10. And one, it's done. Export was successful. I'll hit OK. Now, if we look in this folder that says two interlace, 
you can see it starts with frame underscore zero 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 to frame zero zero eight nine so we have our 90 frames there now those frames you now import into your favorite interlacer whether that's 3d master kit or lentigram or grape or super flip or any interlacing software program i've forgot to mention and then you can uh, make your 3d lenticular print i did end up making a print of this and it looked uh, very nice so with that until next time have a great time making lenticulars bye